First of all, congratulations, Denise. I think out of all the Survivor seasons I've seen, I really, truly believe you were one of the most deserving players I've ever seen win the $1 million. Oh my gosh, truly. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I definitely, I mean, I can't, you know, I think there have been so many deserving players, but I think for me it was just, you know, whether or not I was the most deserving or not, I definitely just felt, I mean, I was able to go in and be who I am. And, and play a strategy that felt right for me, and I and I had a very clear strategy in my head, and and so it I, I just it, it was a great game. I mean, it was a, it was a great experience. So but you. but at the very beginning, it didn't seem like such a great experience. You know, though, but you take it in. I mean, it's even though it was horrible. I mean, and you know, Matt Singh, oh my gosh, my my tribe like fell apart, and then we're we're dealing with all the rain. You know, you could say it's it's a horrible. It's not like fun experience, but it's a great experience because there's so much you can take away from it. I mean, there's just uh, you know, so many lessons to pull from it, so it was great. Did you know you had won? Because this happened a long time ago. You know, I have never, you know, even no matter what the feeling was, at, you know, when we were out there and at that final tribal council, I am just, I'm a realist at heart. And so until, you know, somebody's holding that check or until Jeff actually handed it to me, I just never even allowed myself to really grasp the, the possibility, oh my gosh, I could have just won a million dollars. And so I didn't. And you know, people have said, no, I think you've got it, or I think it's, and I've just never, I've truly never allowed myself to believe them. So this is just, this is like taking it all in and overwhelmed. Now your initial end game strategy seemed like you definitely wanted to go to the end with Malcolm, even at the final four. So what was your plan at that point? Even though he wasn't giving it back to you, what were you hoping he would do? Well, I, I was hoping he would, he would ignite, like, Number one, I was hoping that he would be willing to go to the final, you know, the final three with me and one other. And I just wasn't getting that confirmation from him. And I knew from the very start of this game that my strategy might be that I would have this person who I had been loyal with um, and cared about. And I was just going to have to, like, shank him in the side. Mm. And I just knew I had to do it. And I, I knew I had to do it quick and make it as painless as possible and do it before he got to me. And luckily, because I, I did, a huge part of the game is, is luck and timing of things. And luckily, you know, that worry of, of Malcolm, you know, being able to, to dominate jury votes was already planted in, in Michael and, and Lisa's and Scoopin and Lisa's mind. So that definitely helped. But had he gone to the final three with you, mm -hmm. which of the two did you want to take with you? You know, I probably, Michael. Scoopin, I think because Scoopin and I, we slept, you know, we're, you're out on that island and we slept next to each other every night from the time that the merge came, you know, merge happened and we would have these conversations, you know, we're both parents and, you know, the, you know, hard work. So lifestyle wise and just age wise, we just had this, this connection out there. And so we, you build this relationship and this friendship. And so 100%, you know, I was, you know, about building relationships and wanting to be in the finals with people that I respected and I respected their game and because that's just how I am outside of the game. I want to be with, it's not necessarily about the best of the best, it's I respect you and, and, I, and I want you by my side. So Now a huge turning point in the game was when Matt Singh was dissolved and you and Malcolm were split up into Tandang and Calabao and you landed on Calabao. Did you think that you were going to make it past that first vote? I was so afraid and so I was so lucky. I mean and it's, it's horrifying for Dana. But again, there are make no bones about it. If Dana hadn't gone home, I don't think I'd be standing here. So it's that's the luck part. It's just like you know, things in life happen. It's like oh my gosh, I got lucky, and she got sick, and she she left, and that allowed me to stay. It's just like you know, and then, you know, the tribe. I just had to keep maneuvering to stay in there. So I I was really worried. So a million dollars. What are you going to do with that? Christmas is right around the corner. Oh. You know, I'm going to breathe first. I'm going to breathe and just take it in. You know, we've got, again, a, a nine-year-old daughter that, you know, first thing I need to do is make sure that we've got her college fund all squared sure. away. Um, you know, we're going to have, a, you know, quite a few conversations about, you know, how to be a, a, what I want to be, a, a good steward of, you know, this incredible gift that Survivor has just given us. You know, we're from Iowa. I mean, a million bucks in Iowa you could do a lot with a million bucks and so we, we don't take it lightly at all so you know maybe a little trip but we're going to just take our time and, and really figure this out okay one thing i do want to rewind to a little bit is abby maria because you had a lot of interchange with her tell us a little bit about her is that the real abby that we saw on television that is that is like abby downscaled i mean when you're out there you you are experiencing it's you're experiencing that every day 24 7 the the tension the the hormonal ups and downs and it's, it's just crazy but 
but for everybody. It's not an edit. I mean, for all of us, whether or not, you know, luckily mine was fairly positive. Um, but, you know, for all of us, we are who we are in the game, and it just blows it up big and bad. You know, and luckily I'm, I'm really happy that outside of the game, Abby and I are all good. You know, we are we are two strong women who just, man, we just butt heads, you know, when we're, when we're out in the game. But we're all good in, in post-game. We're all good. Last question I have for you. You have set a survivor record, which I think everybody has heard. You made it to every tribal council and lasted through everyone. Is that a, is that a history marker that you're proud of? You know, in, if I hadn't been standing here being able to interview with you, I don't know that I'd be so proud of that record. Being able to stand here and now say, okay, I've made it to every tribal council and I'm the sole survivor, absolutely I'm proud of it. it. was not the goal I had in mind going in, though. I can tell you, I didn't want to visit tribal council until, you know, until I absolutely had to. So, but being here, I'll take it. All right, well, congratulations, and I hope Iowa is happy. I hope everybody's proud. Thank you.